So our next step in understanding the development of organisms is to look at fertilization in greater detail. And so that's what we're going to be doing in the next couple of flowcharts, but we will begin by doing an overview of this process. Now, thus far, our fertilization knowledge is basically sperm meets egg, and that creates a zygote. But there's a lot more detail associated with this major, major life-harboring event that's worthy of understanding. And in order to do this, we have to first look at some structural components of critical and key players in this fertilization event. And we'll first look at the structure and the idea that the egg sort of holds in this overview of fertilization. The egg, remember, is the sort of result of oogenesis, the birth of an egg, the release through ovulation, that menstrual cycle that we saw in great detail culminates in this ovulatory egg event that is released into the oviduct and hopefully gets fertilized by a sperm. But now, what we have to look at is the structure of the egg and how it relates to the fertilization that's necessary. Egg, the egg, in terms of its structure, is surrounded initially by a plasma membrane. And this is not news or should not be news to anybody because all cells are surrounded by some sort of plasma membrane. It encloses everything and it keeps everything in a stable internal environment that's separate from the external crazy harsh conditions, whatever that may be. So we have a plasma membrane. But what you also have to understand is that the egg is unique as a cell because it actually has one or more coverings post-plasma membrane above the plasma membrane, after the plasma membrane, and these one or more coverings are uh, usually depending on the species. So depending on the species, it may have one, two, three, four, maybe, whatever it may be, uh, uh, different coverings that are above and including the plasma membrane. So depending on species, you'll have one or more coverings. Now what's the purpose? There must be a purpose, and the purpose lies in this fertilization event. We sort of can say that the egg has these coverings for the following reasons. The coverings are going to aid in the sperm fertilization, but specifically, it's going to be, it's going to ensure that the same species does this aid in sperm fertilization of same species. We're only talking about one species right now, sperm. And this is basically the idea that we're going to have these coverings as a barrier. This sort of lends to the idea that this is going to form a barrier to what is known as inter, which, is, which means between, specific, referring to species. So this is basically different species fertilization. So we do not want between species fertilization. We only want the same species sperm fertilizing the same species egg. And in order to do that, we have these coverings that are going to act as a barrier to prevent interspecific, different sperm and different egg of different species trying to fertilize each other. Now, the reason why we have these overall can be sort of summarized in the following sentence. This ensures that only the same species, notice there's only one species here, only the same species sperm gets in to fertilize. It gets in as in gets into the egg past the coverings that are protective in the, their nature to fertilize. So these coverings sort of are dependent on the species. Why are they dependent on the species? Well, that's because sperm plus egg fertilization is going to be very species specific and thus the coverings are going to be very species specific. Now, this is a sort of an overview. We're going to actually look at the mechanism behind this uh, as we move forward. So for right now, take this as sort of a background foundational knowledge of the egg structure and how it relates to fertilization and ensures the same sperm species will fertilize the same egg species, etc. So that's our first look at fertilization. Now, we're going to broadly state the basic steps associated with fertilization. Thus far, we've basically just said sperm beats egg, but there's a lot more to it, as we'll see. So let's look at some of the steps that are associated with this big fertilization event that harbors life itself. We'll initially state that sperm is going to do the following. It will reach the egg, but it has to do something about these coverings. And the coverings are going to be dealt with uh, by this following mechanism. The sperm actually dissolves the protective layers around the egg. Protective layers around 
the egg. Remember, those protective layers are there to ensure that the same species sperm fertilizes the same species egg. Now, the overall goal of this, as we'll put as a side goal or a side note, is that the sperm's goal is that it needs to get to the plasma membrane. It needs to get there. That's why we mentioned it here. But there are these coverings it has to get out of the way. So we'll just say for right now that it dissolves its way through this. Now, what does this then end up in? What's the next job of the sperm? The sperm then will have to meet with certain molecules. Molecules on specifically first the sperm surface. So the surface of the sperm has these molecules that are going to be involved in this binding. Molecules on sperm surface bind to receptors. That's the key here, receptors on egg surface. So we have a lock and key sort of mechanism happening here. We can broadly refer to this as a recognition event. This is critical for fertilization to happen successfully and within the same species. Not between species, but within the same species. You need to have the sperm specifically recognize the specific egg receptors that are going to be necessary for fertilization to successfully happen. So once you have this very specific lock and key sort of sperm receptor meets egg receptor recognition event, you're going to have the following. Upon recognition and thus fertilization, so we'll say fertilization happens because recognition happens, sperm was able to enter, was able to meet up with the plasma membrane, you're going to get uh, in these surface egg changes. Surface of egg changes. Now, this is sort of the idea of the egg activating. Remember in our first flowchart, the egg activates, it changes. And the whole purpose of the egg changes, the surface specifically, remember, what is supposed to contact the, sper the surface of the egg? Different sperm. But the sperm has already contacted the surface, the one that's supposed to fertilize. And now what you're trying to prevent is any other sperm from also fertilizing. Because you've already done the job of fertilization, you don't want any more. So what's going to happen is we can broadly refer to this moment as the idea of preventing a term, a process known as polyspermy. We do not want many sperm fertilizing an egg. Polyspermy is when exactly we have that. Prevents polyspermy, prevents many sperm from getting into egg. Getting into egg. That's what we don't want. So how do we prevent it? We change the surface of the egg so that no sperm can lock in key mechanism with the egg. And this is going to be because of course, when you want fertilization to happen, you only want, and write this in big bold letters, you only want one sperm. You only want one sperm to fertilize one egg to create an eventual zygote. You do not want many. We'll see in greater detail what these egg changes are. We're just broadly stating it right now and what polyspermy really means as we move forward. That's our overview of fertilization. Let's look at the nitty gritty details of these events in specific model organisms from this point forward.